favorite issues is for my book. And the, as you know, you have had access to my Spanish version of the book. I'm coming up with the English one, and it's about coaching skills for leaders. It's about supporting leaders to develop a coaching mindset so they can be effective at having coaching conversations with their colleagues. So that's the goal of the book. And I am interviewing uh, some leaders to enrich what already we have in Spanish. We're translated to English. We're going to be publishing in English next year. So I have been asked to bring more stories to the book. So that's the reason why I want to ask you to share with me some of your stories to the extent that you feel comfortable. You may avoid giving any names and the experiences can be from your current company or past companies and experiences. I know you work with several companies on leadership positions. Um, mm -hmm. For people who do not know you, can you in 30 seconds tell us a little bit about you? What, what is your leadership experience and responsibility? Uh, currently at my company or, or mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm VP of sales for a vitamin and supplement company based in Los Angeles, California. And I enjoy my job a lot. There are some um, uh, key account managers that report into me that cover the whole nation. So I get to travel a lot and talk to a lot of customers and talk to a lot of um, our distributors in order to, you know, spread the word about our product and so far we have been very successful so we are very happy with where we are great great to hear uh, it's nice to hear uh, successful stories yeah. now, in your experience in with your teams and your colleagues at work when you have to develop them we, we talked about that in the past mm -hmm. can, can you think of an example of somebody that you develop as a leader and as a result of coaching the person, the person produce results supporting the, the vision and, and the goal that you have? Well, let me start by saying that helping someone to develop their coaching skills or their leadership skills, mainly it's a privilege because that person is trusting you with their career. I am you know, a mature person. So uh, I've been very lucky and fortunate to be able to talk to and, and to work with, with younger people that are just starting their careers, that they're just beginning to define what they want. So in my current role, I have um, had the pleasure of working with uh, one gentleman and one lady, and they are both thriving. They're incredible, effective, and they have been very open about understanding some of the shortcomings or how they can come across, but um, it's it's just a privilege to see them thriving and just moving up in their careers. And you mentioned something about trusting and the process, like take some time to build that trust and the relationship. Anything that can help other leaders to figure out how to develop these relationships? I think that one thing that is important is to show vulnerability. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes there's this idea that leaders or people who are in charge of other people know and have all the answers. But to work in a way that you explain that their point of view is important, that you need it in order to make an, an, an informed decision. And also if there's a commitment in terms of time or efforts that they need to make to really ask, are they willing to do that? Because if they're not willing to do that, then maybe it's not the right uh, frame of mind in order to, to, to make that a commitment to a customer or to develop a project. Uh, but People have to, you have to ask their permission because once they give you the permission, then the accountability accountability starts. And then it's like, well, these are the basis of, you're creating like the, the a contract between that person and you. These are the basis in which we're going to develop that. And it's, it's a mutual responsibility to, to get through. But it's not just my opinion what counts. It's it's also their opinion and showing them where they bring that value can be really, really pivotal to them. What I'm hearing is a really collaborative approach. When you're working yes. with them, you collaborate and you also trust them as they trust you in building the relationship. You trust them that they can do their job. 
and that they can be successful. And I'm wondering how you that trust, I, I, I believe, makes a difference when you're working with colleagues. If they feel that you trust them, uh, it, it, it counts in, in for them to be more effective at what they are doing. I also think that you, you know, we have to be okay with things getting done in a different way. Mm -hmm. I tend to think that, oh, my way is the way because it has worked for me. But I'm also open to accepting that my way might not always be the best or might not or or that it's not the only one. There are all other ways in which things can be done and um, the result will end up being the same. But you have to be okay to take a different road. And as a leader, that is your biggest responsibility. And take a gamble on these people. If you identify those people as someone that have a, a lot of uh, potential, then you ha also have to empower them and let them make some decisions. And if there's a mistake along the way, be them to 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 correct it, but not um, not always do everything for them. And it's kind of scary. It can be scary to to let it go, but you have to. What about, can you think of an example of somebody of these people working for you in this company or in the past where as a result of your coaching, they thrive and they were more effective? What what did you do with them? Um, you know, there's, there's one example. This was years and years ago, probably about 20 years ago. I worked at a company and we hired this young man and um, and he he was not working uh, for me, for my team, but he was uh, for another person and he hated his boss. So he would come to me and say, Susan, how can I do this? So I developed sort of like a coaching relationship with him, just helping him without being interfering with his boss. But okay, maybe if you do it this way, if you do it this way. So he didn't last very long, very long in that company, but I stayed in contact with him. Um, and maybe two to three times a year, we would chat and it's like, how's your career going? Where are you working now? Well, um, he's brilliant and he um, he's now a VP of sales at a, a, um, at, a, at, a, at a company. And I was talking to him this morning because um, someone that I, I need to do business with, he's super familiar with him. So now he is the one I called him and say, Hey, you know, this guy, how can I, how can I get to him? So now it was, it was his turn. And he goes, Susan, I'm so glad that I can do something, but he's now, we're both at the same level. He's, um, he has a team that he also manages. So I'm super proud of him because he's, he, he, he really exemplifies somebody who, who went all the way and trusted. And, and for 20 years, we have had that relationship. So it's good. That's a great story. And I do believe that when leaders invest in their people, eventually you know, you never know how that would pay back to you. Mm -hmm. That's a great example of that. Yeah. Now, one of the chapters of the book is about ethics. How do you find yourself as a leader having to do, to make any decision or any challenge that was ethical in collaboration with people working for you. So you have to have a challenging conversation with the direct report because they were not following ethical standards or something unethical was going on and you had to manage that. Can you think of any examples about that? Um, you know, I think that you encounter that almost every day. Every decision small big you, 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 it has uh, an element of um ethical conduct in there mm -hmm. and um you know i always have like a a measure in which if i take this action would i if i if five years went by and i looked back on it would i be proud of it would i be okay with my kids my boss my friends looking at it and saying, this is an ethical thing. This is this is correct. If the answer is yes, go ahead and move forward with it. But at times, and then how you behave, you have to realize that people are watching you. And the people that trust you 
are going to behave in a similar manner. So it's a great responsibility what we have to show a good example, a good path. We can't afford to drop the ball and set a bad example because it's not just us. It's not just our action. It has consequences with the people that follow us. So they, they, you always have to maintain that. And it can be a small thing. And I'll give you an example. Last year, we, we, had, a, we had a conference and at the end of the day, we had a car that was completely packed, but it was it was completely packed and I needed help. I was bringing all that stuff to my house and I needed help. So a person in, in there, a person who worked for me said, oh, don't worry about it. I'll just sit in the back with all the supplies and I'll just go in there. And my personal need, I needed somebody to come and help me, but what I said right there, no, it's okay. You don't need to do that. I will go ahead and take care of this because it was important to me that she understood that above all her safety, uh, following the rules that we need that, that, that we need to follow is important because I don't know if she one day is going to be in that situation and she, I have to teach her to choose right. So that's how I see it. This is, you are being in some way a role model. So to follow ethical procedures and following the rules and, and as, as, as that, it, so you chose what was not necessarily more comfortable for you, but you model right. her what is expected. Yes. Mm -hmm. Great. Now we have also another chapter about um, systems and how whatever is happening around us affect our work. So I was wondering if you can think of an example about situations where uh, what's happening politically, socially, economically um, affected the, the work you were doing with some of your colleagues. Can, can you think of any examples? It's, this is part of like the systemic thinking. So about paying attention to how the context affects the text of the conversations. Well, I think that in, sometimes we we have to set aside our own set of values in how we work and how what we perceive to be the correct thing. Um, you know, our company is very company friendly and our founder says, oh, take your vitamin D in the sun, go for a walk. And many times I, I get responses from um, younger team members that is like, oh, I really, I cannot take that meeting at that time because... I'm going for a walk and I, I have a conflict with that. It's, I, I realize it's a personal problem, <laughs> but I have a conflict with that. And it's like, okay, I don't really care about your walk right now. I really just want to get this done, but I have to then be accommodating and understand that that is the policy that we have and that it is my job to respect it. Even if I don't, necessarily agree with it at the moment. I mean, it, it, it's a beautiful concept. It's just that the, at the moment it becomes a little bit of a challenge for me. So yes, I mean, at, at times that it, that is it. And, and you just, you just simply, I mean, I had somebody who told me about a week ago, I'm not going to show myself on camera because I'm in my hammock taking the sun. But I am taking this meeting, and I did. Oh, <laughs> I, I was like, okay. <laughs> so it yes, there are times, I mean, that that you you do you do there you have this conflict over there, but you have to also. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Thank mm -hmm. you for sharing that. Well, I think that you are modeling here being vulnerable at what you're talking before about being authentic. Mm -hmm. You know, when we're talking about one of the key elements of your leadership uh, is your, uh, you, you say the word vulnerability and vulnerability related to being authentic, being yourself, even when it may not um, sound good or look good. So in terms of leadership, um, before we wrap up this brief conversation, do you have any like philosophies or any guidelines that you follow in the way that you lead your people? You already share 
a few things, that you're a role model, that you are vulnerable, that you are collaborative, that you respect their opinions. Um, is anything else that uh, you have not shared yet that aligns to the way you think about your role as a leader? I think that we have, as leaders, we, we have the responsibility to really show people that the human being, the human element is more important than the task that we are asking a person to, to, to complete. And making a person feel valued, uh, an important part of the process is probably the most critical thing because when everything else fails, when the machines fail, when when the, when the trucks not get there, you still have the human person, the human being that can move mountains alone. So for me, being so, I, I always tell the truth, and if I can't say the whole the whole story, I say that as well. It's like I cannot share everything, but I can share this much because there are times when you can't share everything. But um, but I think that people deserve to be uh, recognized for for their efforts and feel valued and understanding that not just getting a sale of a million dollars is important. Sometimes a person that sells at a thousand dollars is is just as important and worked just as hard. So, um, you know, we have something called uh, our weekly report. And normally people who handle bigger accounts, it just sounds flashier. But I try to recognize people who handle smaller accounts because they work just as hard. And one day they'll get to the bigger accounts, but it doesn't mean that it's not meaningful. And I, I cannot allow a person to feel like their efforts did not matter that week just because they didn't uh, result in the bigger in, in in the bigger sales. So making a person feel valued is the most important thing that I think we can do. And I know you. I, I remember you sharing with me some stories where you look at details about bringing presents to people from traveling. <laughs> yes, like the like small detail <laughs> that made people feel good and uh that's a uh, very thoughtful of you to to consider in your own vacation in your own holiday what you can bring to your team members as they feel I've been really good. lucky damian i ha i've had such good teams and every team that i have i think this is the best team and then i go to another company and i find another team that i think oh my gosh this team is even better it's like it, it, every team that i have i just feel is better but there are a lot of people that are also are in the same team that we have like followed together. So it's pretty cool. Well, I really appreciate your time and willingness to work with me in this book. So I'm going to start the recording now. And is anything else you want to say before we finish? I just want to say that I wouldn't be where I am without you. You know that I appreciate everything that you have taught me. And a lot of the the self-control that I have is thanks to you. So uh, thank you very much, okay? <laughs> you helped me from myself. You really saved me from my own self. So thank you. <laughs> thank you for being willing to this interview with me. I appreciate you very much. Thank you. <laughs>